Hi, mate. I'm a massive fan of inline leads. Mm. I can see you've got an inline on there as well. Yeah, well, I've got a little story about this, Rob, actually, because last year I fished at Lindome on the Bomb and Feeder League. Okay. Okay, and when I when I, I was going to Hallcroft and I was... You, as you well know, I love to do that fishing for like little skimmers and that in winter. I love to fish for silverfish on a traditional feeder. And I had a lovely 10 foot SL, lovely light line. And I thought, all I'll do is just clip a bomb on my free running rig and put a hook length on, okay. right? And it was all right. It, I caught a few fish, but I kept, I kept feeling like I was missing odd bites. Mm. And whenever it came to like bomb and corn line, other people around me were catching more than me and I was thinking, it's not that hard. I'm loose feeding corn. Something is fundamentally wrong. And I changed to my little inline lead and it was unbelievable. Without a doubt, better for bites. Okay. I, and I think, and I think you're of the same opinion. In my opinion, and we'll look at this as a real close up, because I think I it's think a we really need to get good the two thing to look at. Side yeah. by side. Effectively, what you've got with an inline lead is, is a bit of a bolt rig. Because a bit of a bolt rig, it hits the lead so fast. The fish hits that lead yes. so fast. It's so instant. There's not a build-up of pressure. It so, is donk so straight on the lead. So people think when you've got a, 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 run, a running rig, oh, it, it runs. It, it doesn't because a fish picks it up this way or this way. And it just, the second that tightens, the fish hooks itself against the lead. Yeah. Whereas on that, when we have the lead hanging down on what we call the traditional setup, it feels the weight of a swivel. There's an element can, of movement. There's there. movement there. There's a hinge effect. There's, there's too much going on it's in my opinion. It's not the same. So, and I definitely missed out last year because of that. So, right. you know what? As well, I think how you've set it up is really important because I do it with um, a little link swivel. But I yeah. love the way you've done this. You've actually yeah, kept I'll, it really I'll, simple. I, yeah, is and and this is back to what I was saying today, right? This is a two minute setup job, literally yeah. no time whatsoever. And I'll show you why I've done it, how I've done it, because I think it's a really nice way of doing it. So first of all, I just want to quickly touch on the fact that I've got really light line on my reel. Okay, what line like, is it? 018, okay. it's 018, right, okay. And Which is what, five pound? It's four pound. It's four that single feeder mono 018, right? And I've got a really soft 10 foot rod, that Superior SL. Yeah, so when you were playing that fish, it was like bent right through. Yeah, which for me is is essential in winter time because I want to fish light hook lengths. Yeah. If if my rod is too beefy, I, I'm I, I, you again end up playing the fish. Again, it's, you, it's, you don't pull. You no, don't pull with a strong rod. And it's rod. something that again came about fishing for silvers. I was fishing for silvers and I was hooking these carp on like 010 at Hallcroft where they're like 10, 12, 15 mm. pound and getting them out. And I was thinking, how am I getting these fish Similar out? Similar to when you hook a fish on fives elastic on your silverfish line. You can't line. break them. You can't break them. Right, so, so a nice soft rod is massive, absolutely huge. It's so important. And then I haven't got like a shock leader on or anything no. like that, right? I've literally just got this 018 line running all the way and I've threaded on this inline bomb. I'm going to touch on that before I move on. Now this inline bomb is 10 grams. Right. With 018 line, how far would you say across it is today, Rob? Well, we've probably got 30 meters. Right, 30 meters. I can cast this 10 gram bomb across here, 30 meters with this light line. Okay. Wherever I can get away with the so light. So the light line is a not necessarily for any reason other than to just cast that light bomb. To cast the light bomb. Okay. You've got to have the light line to cast the light bomb. The reason I like the light bomb is because on days like today when there's no wind, the minimum disturbance in my eyes is, is yeah. more important. I must admit that I found when I was fishing last year with, with the swip, the normal traditional rig, I felt unless I had a big bomb on, I never hit a bite. Okay. And I felt a real advantage with a big bomb. I felt like a bigger bomb was an advantage yeah. for bomb and bread. Whereas I found since I've gone back to the to the inline approach, I can get back I'm, away I'm with exactly that little the bomb. Same. Exactly you know what I mean? the same. So I find that I found that so interesting. I wouldn't hesitate. I need to make this clear. I wouldn't hesitate to put a 20 gram bomb on here. So yeah. there's two. I've got two types of these little inline ICM bombs, right? And the 20 gram, it, it's not a big bomb. No. It's not, but it, if you need to go maybe 35 well, metres, 30 metres. If it was yeah. windy today. Or like, if it was a really steep shelf, maybe. You want to a, that's right. glue the bomb to the shelf, a, a heavier bomb. So all those things. So I won't hesitate. Just I mean, I can switch it on the stem, so it's not a problem. I can just put a heavier bomb on. 
Now, this is where I find it's really interesting. What Short I, stem as well. We're trying yeah, to keep it quiet. I've trimmed that stem down a right. little bit, right? Just be, just because, I mean, that is so neat. Yeah, it? yeah it's I mean, really it's nice. really yeah, neat, it's right? Nice. So it's just, just because I want everything to be per perfect because yeah. I'm fishing in winter and I want it to be bang right. Now, I've got two number eight slots here. And the reason I've got two number eight slots is two reasons. The first reason is they fit just in the bottom of that right. stem. Okay. They don't get stuck in the stem. No, so they're hidden inside. They're hidden inside. And what that does, it's a little bit stiff, I'm going to say. It's not, yeah. I mean, look, it's not really. No, it, it's it, not, it pops out straight you away. Know, it just pops out. But that is, is a bolt effect, right? Yeah. So effectively, I know my rig is completely safe. But I'm getting a little bolt effect there, which I, I think is a really, really nice touch on my on my rig. And the second reason, and you're going to love this, I've got an eight inch hook length on today. And we'll talk about this yeah. in a minute, right? Well, just uh, just obviously I've mentioned it already, but Roy here stipulates different hook length um, yeah. rules. But because we're obviously filming today with regards fishing any commercial venue throughout yes. the country Roy's let us use really yes. whatever we yes. want We're, yeah that's know. absolutely right so so on normally on, I think it's a 20 inch short length but you've got an 18 short yes. length when which you come I to think the is about the right do. length yeah. but on generally on any on any other fishery that you go into where the hook lengths are you can use it anything seven or eight on. bang on for me I, I, think. I think that's the perfect start so effectively your bread's going to be popped up like that uh, whenever you fish a pole you always start eight inch off bottom yeah. don't you right so but but down the middle here today, it's seven foot deep. And I've been to venues in the past where I want I can that see what's extra, coming. I can you see want what's that coming. extra water. So uh, 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 Lindome at Loco, where it's like 12, 13 foot deep down the middle, all I need to do- This is unreal, yeah. What a great. <laughs> is literally slide my number eight wherever I want up this line. And this is only 018 and it sits like that off the bottom. Okay. So I've created myself the ultimate flexible rig okay so yeah. now just with this one rod i can search anywhere from 30 meters from me at any depth off the bottom yeah perfect so with everything perfect so the downside is you can't change your hook length as often because it's on a loop you wouldn't you couldn't if you're pva bagging you'd be awkward but yeah, the yeah, upside yeah. is the, if you were using one a quick stop or a band or whatever you, that was your hook length arrangement yeah you've got so much flexibility with your depths that you can pop baits up and the, the distance you can get your hook bait away from the ledge. And there's no bead, it's super no, neat, no, really no neat. tangles. No tangles, No yeah. tangles, The least right. you can put on the line, the better, uh, to, as far as Which I'm is concerned. what I've done. And then I've got 014 hook length. Now, 014, um, the reason, I, uh, listen, I don't even hesitate to go to 012. We're going to talk about Waggler yeah. today as well, and I've got 012 on that. But when I'm fishing with a bomb and when my bait's popped up, I'm quite confident in not having, the, I, don't, I feel like 014 isn't a super thick line. Some people come carp fishing, they go thick. I, I just think in winter with bread, you've got a chance of a double. You're and getting just, everything out on 014. I'm getting everything out on 014, right? Uh, because because I've told you, when I'm fishing the Silverfish Leagues, I'm landing on 010. Do, do you know what you win for the fish you lost? Absolutely, Absolutely nothing. nothing. Right, exactly. So, And I know it's not going to make a big difference dropping to, say, 012 from 014 on this, on this rod. So there we have it. Now, this is the final point on this rig, and I hope the camera can get in on this. I've got a, um, a rapid stop there on the end, which you can obviously just put your bread in. I'll hook that on in a minute. But I've got a 14 on. Okay. Right. Now is it, that, um, I know there's two. There's KKM, KKH. Yeah, I've got a KKM because it's a bit lighter. Yeah, so you can I pop my, your bait on. I want my bread to be popped up off the bottom. Bread swells massively in the water, right? It's a massive bait when it's there in the water. And I just found, I've just found too many times. I remember uh, me and you a long time ago having the conversation about popped up bread. And um, oh, 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 I just said whack a massive hook on. Whack a massive hook on. You, you, you could you, put a ten on. Losing loads of fish, or I was, you get yeah. your bite and it almost shake itself off. Yeah, and I had the wrong rig because you. So, yeah, yeah. So you, everything was wrong. Everything was, you know, everything was. Well, even yeah. a sixteen. Even I think a sixteen is too small. Too small. Right. Too small. So a fourteen. It's quite a wide gape there. And what I'll do, I'll show you exactly what I do with the, with this bread while we're here. We'll, we can incorporate this all into one because I think it's really nice to show everybody. So before I just open the bread bin, right, there is only one bread to use. We're not sponsored by Warburton's, but maybe we will be after this, right? In my opinion, 
That is the only bread yeah. to use. And nice the, thick warmthness. They it, do a green as well, you know, which is nice. It, that's really even thick, thicker. That's yeah, even, even thicker. thicker. That's fine. As yeah. long as it's that Warburton's because it's so tacky. The bread is so tacky and you need it. I mean, on my first cast today, I wound in after 15 minutes and it was still on my hair. I don't even know how that's possible, but it was. So in here, I've got my little um, bread bin, which I punched out a few earlier so, so I could show Rob. I've got this eight mil punch. I've got a range of punches here, Rob, right? So I can have any sort of size I want. For me, I don't know what you think, eight mil seems perfect. Yeah. I just feel like it's the right size. Yeah, I think you can go big sometimes, you know. You, listen, you probably can, but I'd rather go big with the depth than I would with the width. Okay. Because yeah, I yeah, want I the get hook. It. Yeah, if you want the hook. I don't want hook, the hook being sorry. masked. So all I do is I literally just punch that and push them out into this side bit here. And I usually do five, six, seven at a time because, you know, I don't think it makes any difference. But let's just do a couple. And then I'm going to get my... Uh, my spike and effectively i always think two is a nice one to start with but i have caught a lot on three like you say bigger bait whatever you do don't compress that bread so can you see me putting okay. that on there right obviously i appreciate rob that you you, you know you, you you totally know this but for the guys at home no but the important part is you're not compressing i haven't you? compressed those, that bread those at, two bits at all now when you chuck that in you, what you want is for them to go soft and fluff up as fast as possible. Yeah, right and you need to, just like when you're bread fishing on a canal, you need to keep your bread fresh. Don't leave it out exposed. No, because right? it'll go dry out. It, it'll dry out, and I don't want that. So there you go, and that will stay on. I mean, I could I could put an ounce bomb on like at Lindo, like I've told you before. Yeah. We chuck to the middle. It's like 50 metres, and you it, it's still on. Well, I can on, see on, it in on, the on, air. On loco. On loco, yeah. on the big lake. So this is the sort of thing that you might be doing. So you can see, and all that's going to happen is your bomb goes down to the bottom, and that bread's just going to float up Do you think like that bread that. Um, pops up for a long time, or do you think once it's took on some water, it gently sinks? Well, this is... My opinion is, if you don't move it, I think it remains popped up, okay. right? And the reason I think that is because I've dropped it in a tank in an hour at home. And it's been all right. And one hour later, it was still popped up and it was still on, which gave me so much confidence. It's it's a weird, for people who have fish bread, it's, this is like, oh yeah, I know what to do. But so many people have got no experience of bread mm. and they don't realize that unless you get all these little things right, you're not going to get the results at the end of the day. And I mean, you could just go fishing on a winter's day like this. Yeah, you? fantastic. You yeah, don't even good. need yeah. the other so bait we're going to look at in but a bit. As we, as, we, as we touch on and throughout all these videos, what we want to try and get across with um, to everybody is it's about the watercraft side of it. It's about the decision making. It's mm. about where you're going to cast to. So where are you going to cast to next? Because well, you can chuck that out and see if you can catch another one. In my, in my head, you always, if you catch a fish, you always cast to the same spot. Okay. Right, so this will be going two thirds across, pretty much bang in front of me. Again, it'll get 15 minutes. If I don't get a bite, then I'll cast somewhere move. else. Okay. I, I, I am, if I caught three fish in a spot and then I didn't get a bite, I'd persevere, right? I'm not having one cast put yeah. me off. But or you'd move on, maybe just a meter or just a small move sort yeah, of thing. Look, I'm not clipped off or anything like that. So early on, I will, I will be very much prepared to move about. I know, I know there's so much cover on that far side. I've got a real strong feeling that is going to be a good place to catch the fish. But we've had a free one down the yeah, middle, have, yeah. which has bought us yeah. another chuck. So I'm going to chuck that back in now and then we'll pick up with you guys later because I want to touch on a few other little bits and bobs that are going to try and give me a bit of the energy. 